So to start, let's look at the specific tools that I bought for the install that I'm doing. First, when you're doing any kind of wire work, a lifesaver is going to be a good wire stripper, crimper, and cutter. I really like this kind of wire stripper. It just makes stripping and getting the right end of your wire so much easier. It's a really big time saver over the traditional cheap type of wire stripper. The $12 here, for me, it was money well spent and it really helped simplify the process of getting all the wiring done. Then a heat gun. I had a heat gun on hand that I bought years and years and years ago, but it is this Wagoner heat gun. It is very inexpensive. I think I bought mine at Lowe's, but it's here on Amazon as well. Really simple. It plugs in, it has a relatively long cord. You'll need this for heat shrink tube and solder seal and other type of wire connectors. I was looking for copper AWG wire. And so I needed 16 gauge, eight gauge and 12 gauge. This 16 gauge is what I used to wire up the switches that we're gonna talk about in a little bit and to run other low current devices that are along the run. This 12 gauge wire is what I chose to go from the relay itself to the light. And then finally this eight gauge wire. This is going to be the main power and ground that goes from the battery to the fuse box. We move on to our fuse box and our relays. This is the fuse box I chose. It comes with fuses, it comes with labels, it comes with screws. It's ready to go right out of the box. Now our relays. This is where a lot of people get confused. Relays look confusing. They have a lot of wires that come out of them and we'll be going over how to wire up the relay in a later video. These come with a little mounting tab and they come with a sealed waterproof base. These relays just help make sure that you're not bringing that high current that will run the LED lights into your cabin to the switch. They are LED backlit. They have many different varieties, designs to help you categorize what your lights are going to. Apile is a really good brand. They have a three year warranty as you see, and they make industrial level quality switches. And now finally, we get to the lights, right? This is what we have put all of this work in up to this point to get to. Went with these smaller Adara lights and I really like these. These are spotlights, they are grilled, and it's just a timeless look. For my floodlights, I went with these Nylite round floodlights. Now that I have kind of given you all this information, dropped it in your lap, it's time for, for you to think about what makes sense for you. What makes sense for what you want? Do you want to make your own wiring harness or do you want to go with a quality off the shelf unit from a company like Nylon? Do you want a bunch of spotlights that have very far light output or do you need something that is going to be closer to the car to see? And where are you going to mount these? Is there a spot that makes sense? What will you have to buy in addition to what we've already discussed to install these? because it's not just wire, switch, and lights. There are a lot of other supporting items that you need to be able to install these. So now it's your turn to sit down, make a list, and really think out the parts that you need, parts that you want, and what look you're going for. At the end of the day, functionality is the most important, but you also want to be able to look at your car, look at these lights, think, yeah, that's what I pictured in my mind. And once you have done that, you can go on to the next videos in this playlist and go over the various other aspects of installation.